So, have you ever felt the virus that makes you feel anxious, but only on Sunday nights? <laughs> I felt it, and uh, as you laugh, I think you felt it too. And it's the virus that we feel on Sunday nights because we know exactly we have to go back to work on Monday. And uh, let's call that the Monday phobia virus. And um, let me tell you my story about Monday phobia and how that started. So my first job was in, in, an, in an investment bank um, as a young intern. And when I arrived, I was super excited because that was um, something new. It was not university, it was, it was practical application. And I knew the hours are going to be quite long and um, probably also the work is going to be tough. But I felt so energized that um, I felt I was ready. And, um, and then I started and after a short time, I felt more like a working horse um, under constant pressure than myself. And uh, my manager would come to me and say something like, hey, Dimitri, diamonds are formed under pressure. And, <laughs> and I felt, yeah, okay, thank you, I guess. Um, <laughs> but yeah, actually, I'd enjoyed it. And if I think back, I was even kind of proud that I was working more than maybe my peers. Um, but that changed on, on one night, and that was the night just before Christmas, where everyone else was probably with their families or with their friends. But um, I was, as usual, in the office finishing a presentation. And I think for three hours, more or less, um, I was shifting around teeny tiny divider lines to make the presentation look perfect. And um, th that's probably how com committed I was at back in the days. And so I sent the finished presentation to my boss, and, um, and he replied me from his uh, you know, the BlackBerry mobile phone. And um, <laughs> he replied with <me> this. <laughs> OK. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I didn't quite know um, whether he just didn't appreciate my work or whether he just texted that very quickly because he was having dinner with his family. Um, but what, hap what had happened at that moment is that I got the feeling that all of my work was totally meaningless. And I had, at that moment, lost my purpose, but I gained something else. I gained, I gained Monday phobia. <laughs> because without purpose, there is no motivation, as um, we all know. And for me, that was the moment where I simply lost it. And to be honest, um, I uh, never recovered at that employer from Monday phobia, and things were just not the same. I wouldn't be as engaged anymore. I wouldn't be as productive anymore. And I didn't last long, to be honest, in that position. So, but if you think about it, we spend around 16 hours a day awake and conscious, right? And if we account for your age um, for weekends, maybe for vacation, and now hold on to your chairs because this is shocking. Accumulated, we spent around half of our most active and also most healthy years at work. And let me ask you this. Would you spend half of your time on this earth in a place that has no meaning, that has no purpose, and where you probably feel quite unjoyful the whole time? Would you? Probably not. And that all because someone else failed to give you the appreciation that you expected, or the appreciation you maybe even deserved. That, that got me thinking. So, organizational research shows us we are not the only ones with Monday phobia. I mean, the ones who laughed and I. And <laughs> And in fact, we are in the middle of a Monday phobia epidemic. Half of the population asked in this research actually re replied to the question, are you happy 
With your job, they replied, no, or Monday phobia. That's crazy, I think. And I mean, happiness is so central in our society at home, but also at work. But it seems not to be there, right? So I don't know, even studies about medical or health related illnesses show us that there is a direct correlation between the lack of happiness or joy at work and things like burnout and things like self-esteem, low self-esteem, depression and even, well, anxiety. So, my investment banking experience had ended after that, but I realized that there is very few people and very few corporations out there who actually use the little term thank you or I appreciate to give meaning to employees or give purpose to employees and to make them happy and eventually also more productive. There's very few. So when I quit my corporate world, and um, got on the more entrepreneurial journey, I said to myself, well, um, if I see Monday phobia anywhere, I will try to help to cure that. But how do you do this? I mean, I am in a quite motivated place right now in my life, and I want to help corporates to do the same for their employees as I experienced. But we, what we need for that is we need tools. So you see there is text, so it's going in the right direction already. But there is so many tools out there that can help everyone write perfectly spell-checked grammar messages, right? But that wouldn't help in the case I told you about with me and my manager. So we embarked on the journey to create a spell-checker for the emotional state of a message. And imagine if my manager had that, and today I know that he was just stressed because he had to, um, to buy presents for his children, and that's why he just replied, OK. But if he had this kind of feedback that we have there, that his text would turn red when the receiver might not like what he's writing, maybe he would have changed his mind, and maybe I would not be here today. Anyway, this is just one aspect. But what also makes people happy in a corporation is friendship, friends. So if we can find a system that, as here, grows connections in an organization and points people towards other people that are likely to match and are likely to form a relationship, what would we get out of that? we would get a much more interconnected organization, we could foster much more creativity, we do probably less mistakes, and we gain a bunch of friends. Not too bad. And the last thing I want to talk about today is routine. So much of our doing is um, steered by routines, so the puzzle we had to crack is how can we solve or implement a system technically into the routine of an enterprise that actually increases positivity in, let's say, communication, and that way increases purpose for all employees and eventually maybe helps to be more happy and even more productive. And I would say, and this is a crazy picture, sorry for that, <coughs> I would say our goal is to create something that we call organizational self-awareness. <clears throat> that might be on the emotional side, on the process side, but in any side... <coughs> Sorry about that. <coughs> but, but on any side, we need to start with the employee first. <coughs> and 
And with that, I would actually like to say thank to you for being here because my voice is going. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I hope to see you around. And if you have any questions, please feel free. Thank you very much.